Hello and welcome back to the Littlest Petcast. I am your host, James, and today we are looking at the episode A Day at the Museum. So, it begins with Blythe being pulled by the pets to the park. Well, Blythe is technically walking them, but they're so excited that they're basically pulling her. Minka really wants the ball now, but Blythe says she has to wait for it because it's too dangerous to play in the street. And Minka calls the street stupid because she really wants to play. But before they get to the park, Sunil stops and screams at a poster. They all see it, and it's for a movie called Crazy Zombies 2 Museum Zombies. So, just just to see if this exists, because Crazy Zombies is generic enough where I can see that that might exist. And I looked it up, and it exists. And it is not what you would think it is. <laughs> what it is, is a Flash game where you can play as an assortment of different characters from an assortment of different series. And it's a beat-em-up where the enemies are all zombies. So, there are at least nine of them? And the one I found was nine, and it has, like, a really interesting roster. Of course, there's, like, Goku, Frieza, and stuff on it, but there's also, like, Asuna from Sword Art. There's Naruto. Uh, Ichigo from Bleach. No Luffy, actually, but... Uh, they had Skullamania. Uh, Bob Parr, Mario... Uh, it's just, just a bunch of weird and eclectic things. Just beating up zombies. So, yeah, you know, t take that as you will. M maybe don't go and play it. Unless you absolutely want to. I don't know. So... Back to the episode. Vinny says that they just stopped having nightmares from the first one. So Blaith promises to them that she won't let them see it. But Vinny and Sunil are actually excited to see it, and Blaith kind of rolls her eyes, as I would. I don't get horror movie people. I don't like being scared. I am not going to go into an environment where I am willing to be scared. So, yeah. And then the opening happens. And then they get to the park, and Minka is really excited for the ball. Blythe uh, lets her have it, but she doesn't really know what to do with it when she has it. So, Blythe says, you throw it, and someone else gets it. Which is basically describing catch. And Minka says, I think I get it. And asks Sunil to go along. Uh, and then she throws it. Sunil goes along but then runs into a signpost. Blythe asks if he's alright. And uh, Sunil says he's dazed after hitting that sign. So they see the sign. And it says that the park is closed for reseeding. The pets are very disappointed that they might have to go back to the shop. And then Pepper looks across the street and sees a good old lawn to play on. Blythe isn't sure about this, but the pets really want to, and they break out their puppy dog eyes. Blythe tries to resist initially, but it gets her in the end, and they cross the street to get there, even though, like, Less than five minutes earlier in the episode, Blythe was saying that the street is dangerous. And they just, like, crossed right in the middle of it. But no one gets hurt. It still bugs me, but... Uh, not... N when, when we get deeper into this episode, 
Uh, that that'll seem like a like a particle of dust compared to what happens. <laughs> okay, so they go across the street and they start playing. Uh, Penny passes to Russell, but it just hits him in the face. And then Minka tries catching it, but then Vinny steals from Minka, and Minka tries to get it back. Vinny dodges her for a minute, and then throws it. Minka gets it, and Sunil asks uh, for the ball. Minka throws it, but it goes over Sunil and into the building. Minka and Penny Ling chase after it in the building as well, and Blythe and the rest of the pets chase after them. But Blythe stops them, and they see a No Pets Allowed sign. Zoe begins a tirade on what she would do if she was in charge. Well, if dogs were in charge and she was their supreme leader. But Pepper asks her to zip it because they have more important things to worry about. Because... Minka and Penny Ling are in a place where animals aren't allowed. The museum. By the way, we're at the museum. I don't know if they fully established this until later. Except for the fact that it's called Day at the Museum. But either way, they're in there and they need to figure out how to get them so in the museum Minka and Penny chase after the ball and pass by a security guard who is reading a comic book and um, the security guard doesn't see them the ball lands by a skeletal foot and Minka gets it but is more impressed with what she sees afterwards it pans out and we see the skeleton of a t-rex and penny says that is one big pet said the smartest panda in the world (laughs) so back outside blythe discusses that they'll all be in trouble if penny and minka get detected so blythe decides to break the rules i don't know the word Exactly. Row, row, fight the power. Anyway, Blythe decides to break the rules and bring the rest of the pets inside by stuffing them in her backpack and tote bag. She asks them all to be very quiet. And as they are entering, Sunil and Vinny remember and discuss the subtitle for Crazy Zombies 2, Museum Zombies... (laughs) Actually, wait, I'm going to Google Museum Zombies to see if that's an actual thing. Well, from what I can tell, there aren't uh, Museum Zombies movies or whatever. But there are zombie museums. So, if that's your bag, uh, I guess you can enjoy it. It's not my bag. I, I guess it would be like that museum in Scooby-Doo 2? You know, the one where they had, like, all the costumes for all of the spookums? Or or the one in Mystery Incorporated, because that had it as well. Mystery Incorporated, best show, because it takes inspiration from Scooby-Doo 2. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. This is crazy off topic. Uh, Let's get back to the episode. (laughs) So Blythe walks in, but the security guard asks what's in her bags. Uh, The guard asks again, and Blythe tries to deny that she has bags. But then the guard informs her that her bags exist. And continues asking what are in her bags. Blythe is nervously answering the question. And like you can see her sweat. And it gets really tense. But when she asks why he's wondering. The guard says that she could just check them in if she wants. 
Blythe laughs at this <laughs> nervously again. And says so she's fine and wants to haul the luggage around because it's a good, good workout. So, in the prehistoric exhibit, uh, Penny and Minka talk about what life was like in dino times. They agree that it must be pretty big. And Minka says that the T-Rex is the biggest Tyrannosaurus Rexiest dino that ever lived. And I guess that's a true statement. So, and then Penny Ling hears the sound of footsteps and drags Minka around the corner of the exhibit and says that she thinks they shouldn't be here. Penny wants to grab the ball and go, but Minka asks, don't you want to know what it's like? To live in prehistoric times. And then with like a slight transition. Which I just remembered is a pterodactyl. Really? Holy crap. <laughs> okay the pterodactyl comes into play later. I'm going to pause right now and make a note of that. Okay. Note made. Uh, with a flash transition of the pterodactyl, they are now in prehistoric times. The reason I said in like I did is because, uh, this gets, this gets weird later. Like, a lot weird. And Penny seems confused at first, but, I don't know, she's getting into it. And Minka begins pointing out dinosaurs that are in the area, such as the Triceratops, the Stegosaurus, and the... Di uh, this, this one confuses me, because, like... Like, I think I heard the name said in, like, a Professor Layton game or something... Where they said Diplodocus, but they say Diplodocus. And that's the more correct way of saying it, because, like, the Diplodocus was first discovered by an American. So the American way of saying it is the more correct way, but Diplodocus is also an acceptable way of saying it. Speaking of small inconsistencies, this technically doesn't matter or mean anything, but I'm bringing it up just because... So, the Stegosaurus and the Diplodocus both lived at the same time. The Triceratops came later, though. Like I said, it doesn't mean anything. This is a fantasy. And, you know, you can have whatever dinosaurs you want. It just would have been a nice touch. You know, if they had dinosaurs that corresponded with the time. But, uh, we're not... We're not going for accuracy, as we'll soon see. Oh. This, um... This episode just really gets weird. With this. Okay. So. Penny Ling finds what she thinks is the ball. But it's an egg. And it hatches into a baby triceratops. They try to decide on a name for it. Penny Ling wants to call it Penny Ling Jr. And Minka wants to call it Minka 2. So they compromise and call the Triceratops Minling. So Minling wants to play tag and they chase after her. 
And then Penny Lynn catches her, and they see a giant dinosaur, and they are afraid. However, the dino just licks them, and they call it a dino dog. And they continue to enjoy the licks that this dino dog is giving. Weird. So Blythe continues to search, but Pepper stench is causing problems when other people smell it, and then Blythe smells it, and Russell, who's in the bag with Pepper, can't handle it. But Blythe says that he'll just have to live with it for now. Now get back inside, or they'll be seen. And then Russell asks, By who? That big, burly security guard coming our way? And then Russell and Pepper get back down because, yeah, yeah, that's exactly who. So the guard questions Blythe again, and Blythe tries to pretend she doesn't have bags again, but the guard's like, no, I'm not having that. <laughs> and then, uh, like, he questions her more. And Blythe tries to say that the fuzzy moving thing in her backpack is fuzzy keychains and that she loves fuzzy keychains so the guard demands to look in the backpack but then Zoe comes up with a plan to save Blythe and Pepper and Russell so she gets out of the bag turns around a bit and then runs through them and the guard's like, hey! And Blythe immediately knows what to do with this. She asks, can you believe that someone brought their dog in here? They should know that pets aren't allowed in here. They, there's a sign outside and everything. And the guard says, I know, I put it up myself. <laughs> and Blythe asks if he's going to give chase, and he does. Blythe is relieved, but then snaps back into panic mode because now there are three pets on the loose and a guard that is somewhat suspicious. But this guard might not be the best guard <laughs> because the guard chases Zoe and says, Come back, cutest doggy I've ever seen. And that is a genuinely good quote. So Zoe continues to run, but then stops at the T-Rex exhibit and admires all of the bones. And she treats them as, like, bones that dogs chew on. And says that it'll take me a month to bury all of this. But then she hears the guard, and then Minka and Penny pull her into the prehistoric fantasy... So th this is where things get really messy. <laughs> so, so Zoe says that they've been looking for them. But then she looks around and sees the prehistoric setting and says, I like what your imaginations have done with the place. That is, that is a very, very weird sentence. Like, 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 I don't... <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. This episode plays or messes or whatever with diegesis really hard. How much of this is real? How much of this is fake? Like, why are they acknowledging the fake thing if it's not real? And if it's not real, why does it... Why do they know it's fake? Like, that's not how imagination works. Imagination works in that it is real while you're imagining it. It stops being real once you acknowledge it. But not in the context of this show, I guess. So, it's, uh, it's, what, I don't, why, why? Uh, so, 
d this kind of beating up of the diegesis, which I guess I should explain what diegesis is. Diegesis means basically what is real in terms of what the story is telling. So th they know it's not real, but it is real. That That is quite possibly the weirdest sentence that has come out of my mouth during this podcast. And need I remind you, I accused the Biscuit Twins of leaving part of their dark soul in Blythe. This is weird. This is super weird, super heady. I don't get it. So they just kind of like throttle the diegesis like throughout the episode. And then Zoe says that she's so inspired by what's happening that she feels a song coming on, which Penny and Minka figure. So this is one of the few times where they warn you a song is coming. And I think they knew it was necessary because this song is, is a bit weird. And the first time I watched this episode, I was freaking out hard. Like, what is this show even anymore? Like, what? What is it? This, like, ridiculous, like, walking the line between reality and imagination nonsense. And then weird stuff happens in the song. Like, the song itself is actually probably one of the better songs in the series if I'm being completely honest I don't know it, it feels like like a MLP song I don't know it kind of feels like it fits in that vein and I guess sort of this show I'd argue more MLP than this show but you know that's uh that 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 is splitting hairs when you consider the fact that this show so far has had ska eighties thriller scooby doo sixties vocal harmony and other songs in different styles so yeah yeah this this is one of the more sane songs style wise, but just what happens in the song is peculiar. So they're singing about dinosaurs and how dinosaurs are awesome, which I mean, that's a fairly simple concept and a good one, but then midway through, they pass by a tree and between one side of the tree and the other side of the tree, they turn into dinosaurs themselves and sing about what they were like as dinosaurs. And that just freaked me out my first time. Like, like I expected it this time and it's still a little weird, but it's, it's still kind of enjoyable but, like, the rest of the episode makes this still weird. Because, like, like if they have this power to change themselves based on the tree, like, is it the tree that's doing this? It is, are they still animals? Are they, what is happening in this episode? Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like, like, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I'm, 
So they also keep referring to the dinosaurs as pets. And then the song is even called Dino Pets. And that's how they refer to themselves as dinosaurs as well. But, like, do they know that not all animals are pets? Is pet just, like, a word for animals? Because, like, that's a... That's a distinction that we have made in the English language, at least. Probably in a lot of other languages as well. But that's, like, a distinction. It's a pet. It's a domesticated animal that lives with us or it could be a tamed animal in terms of some animals but for the most part they're domesticated and like the word pet is set to differentiate itself from wild animals because there's no pet equivalent to wild animals because wild animals are the norm when you say animal, you think wild animal. Unless you specify with pet. So, yeah. Yeah. I kind of learned about that in a YouTube video. Because, like... Okay, I'm going to go off on a tangent right now. But it's better than thinking about the logistics of this episode. So, like, there are lexiconal gaps. And, uh, like, one such lexiconal gap is that we have no truth equivalent to lying. And when you say lying, you're lying. But you don't usually say true thing. And that's because telling the truth should be the natural state, at least in English. And lots of uh, languages, all languages, have these lexiconal gaps. But they're, like, in different places. So it's just a matter of figuring out what it is. By the way, I learned... All of this on the channel uh, Arika Okrantz. I swear I butchered that name. But yeah, uh, check that out. Meanwhile, back to the episode. So, well, no, we're going to go back to the tangent and then back to the episode because I just saw what was in my notes next. So, like, yeah, I guess if a panda can be a pet, the concept of wild animals or what animals are wild, if a panda is just a pet, a species that has been domesticated enough to be a pet, if that's a pet, then the idea that an animal can be wild and not a pet could be as strange in this universe. Back to the episode for real this time. So, Blythe continues searching and finds that she might have been going in circles. She then spots the security guard and runs off. The security guard sees her running and he gives chase, but she hides in a supply closet. She locks the door, giving everyone a chance to relax a little, and Russell pops out and walks out and is celebrating the fresh air, even though they're in a closet, but it's fresher than being with Pepper. Blaith says, how can things get worse? And Sunil and Vinny say, yeah, it can get worse. Museum zombies. Blythe says that there's no such thing as museum zombies. But 
there is a museum security guard really, really wondering what's in my bag. And it's all of you, and you're not allowed to be here. So let's f figure this out. They say it's time to get a move on again, but Russell doesn't really want to because of Pepper and her stench. So the door begins to open, and then Blythe turns the lights off and hides behind a mop. Yes, actually. Pepper hides in the same bag as Sunil and Vinny, and then Russell just curls up. So the janitor walks in and uh, just grabs Russell, thinking he's a sponge or a brush or whatever, and just puts him in the mop bucket. Russell clamors for help, and Blythe becomes more worried as the announcement plays that the museum is closing in 10 minutes. So Minka, Penny, and Zoe are surfing on the dinosaur that I assume Plessy from Super Mario 3D World is based off of. Yeah, I don't really know my dinosaurs too well. I mean, I know some of the basic ones. Uh, I had to turn on subtitles for Diplodocus. But, like, I mean, if it was in Land Before Time, I probably know it. I've seen a few of them. I'm not sure which ones. Because that was a really long time ago when I last watched a Land Before Time movie. But then Minka, Penny, and Zoe wipe out and they start talking like surfer dudes. And Zoe says that this imagination is far out. And that she should sing about it, but she already did. Again... Like, the songs, like, like, usually when songs happen, like, the events of the songs might be diegetic, but the song itself is not diegetic. At least that's how most musicals work. Here, they're kind of subverting that, but for no reason that I can see. Like... I don't know why they chose to subvert it. It's a subversion without reason. Like, usually when you subvert something, you're pointing out something. Or doing something with that subversion. But they just act as if the subversion is normal. And that just uh, doesn't make sense. So Penny suggests going back to Blythe, which Minka agrees with initially, but then the dino they surfed on comes back, and they go on for another ride. Dudes. So the janitor passes by the T-Rex exhibit, and Russell hops out to admire it for... It is the biggest predator of its time. And then the guard passes by and sees Russell, but then he double checks and Russell balls up. The guard picks up Russell and determines him to be a prickly rock and throws it with the rest of these prickly rocks. Russell uncurls himself and hears Minka, Penny, and Zoe. He goes over and asks them what they're doing doing okay and that's where we leave it for now because back with Blythe Sunil and Vinny can't deal with Pepper's scent and Pepper is still very nervous because like that's what's making her stench up and Sunil and Vinny tried to get her to think non nerve wracking thoughts like the beach but it turns out the beach makes her nervous and produces a equally bad smell. So they hop out and run off. Uh, even though they said they're scared of the zombies, they'll take their chances with the zombies over Pepper's smell. P 
Pepper yells at them about how she's taking this very personally. So Vinny and Sunil run off and end up near some stuffed animals and think that they're museum zombies. Which really is messed up when you think about it. Because they're, they're like... Animals. Actual animals. And they're just on display in a museum. Well, we'll learn later that they're actually models. But, like, if they weren't... Wait. Wait, d does any museum use taxidermy? I think museums have to use taxidermy at some point. But, like, whatever. It's still a little weird. But, I mean, I guess if they're fake, it's not as bad. It's like seeing those fake humans, I guess. I don't know. I just keep thinking of Night at the Museum and, like... Like the Neanderthals, where like they're they're actually fake, but you know w when when the museum is at night, uh, like they come to life and become real. But that's neither here nor there. But but any anyway, <laughs> anyway. So Russell is admiring this prehistoric imagination, reality, whatever. And is looking at all of the dinosaurs. And Penny Ling gives us their names. And they're just, you know, regular names. Like the Velociraptor is named Mike. And they're friends with the Velociraptor. Even though the Velociraptor is, is a horrific killing machine. So... And Russell is upset because he wants to see big, ferocious animals. And she's giving them all cute names and, like, cute personalities. So, so then, as if this episode couldn't be weird enough, the lights in the museum are flashing on and off and we hear the announcement that their museum will close in five minutes. Again, in the imagined prehistoric space, the real museum lights flash and the real museum announcement plays. What the Fargo? The lights and the announcement also scare Minling because she's not used to it, but she's not real. Oh my god, <laughs> she's not real. They have when they eventually have to leave, they have to say goodbye. It's like uh, that one Superman comic or Justice League episode, The Man Who Has Everything. Yeah, that one. Where Superman has to say goodbye to his fake son. Wow, that... <laughs> Except they know it's fake. Oh, God, that's what happens <laughs> in... Uh, in Man Who Has Everything as well. Like... Superman knows his son is fake, but it's still sad when he has to leave. Oh, oh goodness. That, that is, oh, oh God. Oh God, okay, okay, okay. Back to the episode. So... If if I can get back there, let's let's see. Um, right. So the security guard is calling in on his walkie-talkie, saying that he found some suspicious activity in the prehistoric area, but it's a prickly rock. So he says he'll do a sweep of the African savanna exhibit before calling it there and locking up. So Blythe hears all of this and goes to tell what she thinks are the three pets, but sees 
Only Pepper. Pepper explains that they ran off after they couldn't handle her smell. And Blaith is panicking even more because she has five minutes to find six pets, which is less than one minute per pet to find all of them. So Sunil and Vinny are still scared, but then Vinny notices something. He goes to tap on them and he finds out that they're models, which is a relief. So yeah, this is when I say they're models, but it would be a lot worse if it was actually taxidermy, but they're just models. So Sunil says he was very worried about the zombies but then Vinny reminds Sunil that zombies only come out when the lights turn off. But then the lights start flashing on and off and Sunil starts getting scared again and saying, I do believe in zombies. I do believe in zombies. I do believe in zombies. Which, which after this episode, I'm also willing to believe. Like, I can believe this universe has zombies because this universe has no regard for reality anymore after this episode i am dead serious on that well maybe not dead serious but like this episode's really weird so so in the fantasy the lights are still flashing and russell demands that they end it but penny ling says that she doesn't know how to end this fantasy and that they're stuck. And how? How? This is this is way too high a concept. Like like I said earlier, this this kind of subversion exists to do something interesting or reinforce ideas or break apart ideas or or start a discussion. But they're just doing this just for the sake of the plot? Uh, I don't, I don't even know. This is, this is weird and stupid and complicated and I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I don't know. I'm not sure kids would get it or maybe kids will get it the most and the older you get the less you understand. Maybe that's it? But I don't know. That is still a very weird thing to do. Still Minka says she doesn't mind being stuck here and then a screech is heard and they think it's Russell. But Russell says it wasn't them and points to a pterodactyl. The pterodactyl swoops in and they run, but it's not enough because it catches them and it turns out to be Blythe. And I'm glad I wrote this down because what the heck? <laughs> this is another clever use of foreshadowing because if you remember, the pterodactyl swoops in that brings them to this and a pterodactyl brings them out of the fantasy. So that's a nice bit of book ending, foreshadowing, and it's used on an episode where reality itself is questioned. <laughs> that time I am dead serious. Cause like, like if they can just go into this weird imagination hole whenever, then why is reality a thing to them anymore? Why aren't they stuck in this proverbial rabbit hole? I mean, Alice at least had to fall down a rabbit hole to get to this weird stuff. How many literary comparisons can I make with this? 
Yes, I'm calling comics literary. Shut up. You you all went to free comic book day, right? I sure did. And I got more than free comics at free comic book day. Anyway. So the pets realize that it's Blythe and are relieved. Blythe now has to find Vinny and Sunil and begins searching only to hear a reminder that the museum closes in three minutes. Which Blythe is making good time. Now she has more than a minute per pet. So Vinny and Sunil are freaking out about the museum zombies. And then a guy dressed as a mummy comes out and Sunil says, Mummy! And he says, I want my mommy too. But then Sunil points him to the mummy and they start running. So Blythe notices that the security guard is getting ready to lock up for the day. Worried that Vinny and Sunil will be here all night, she decides to come clean and say, Hey, I have animals in this museum. So Vinny and Sunil run away from the mummy. And Vinny sees Blythe and points her out. So Blythe goes up to the guard, and the guard's like, Hey, it's you. Hope you had a great day at the museum. And Blythe starts going up and saying, Well, here's the thing. But then the mummy comes walking around, and Vinny and Sunil decide they need to do something to stop the mummy from getting Blythe. So they rush to the mop bucket to run through the zombie. So Blythe says, I have something to confess, uh, you know. But then the mummy passes by and the guard calls him Fred. And that Fred is the mummy, which is the museum's mascot, and he never breaks character. And, uh... She continues confessing, but then she sees Vinny and Sunil rushing down. She pushes the guard's comic book that he was reading at the beginning in his face to distract him, and Vinny and Sunil hit Fred and head out of the museum. The guard goes to help Fred, and Blythe uses this opportunity to escape and say, I had a great time at the museum. Sorry about all the rule-breaking. And the guard turns to Fred and said, she's a nice kid. So then everyone is resting outside. Minkus says that it was fun, and Vinny and Sunil agree, but Pepper calls them out on this, saying they were scared the entire time. My first time through this episode, so was I. And now I'm a little more scared after actually talking about it. Because I went to the man who has everything. <laughs> And that's not a reference I would think I would have made on this. But, you know, things. Anyway, Vinny and Sunil says that that's why they loved it and that it's better than those silly zombie movies. Again, I do not understand horror people. Uh, so Minka asks if they can return, but Blythe is like, I don't know. Like after today, I just I just want to go home and chill, which Zoe likes the sound of. Minka says that they could finish their game of catch at home, but Blythe says that they lost the ball. Minka says she found it and pull it up, but it begins to hatch. Russell says that that's not a ball. Minka and Penny say that it's a dinosaur egg and it hatches fully and we see the perspective of the baby looking out at Penny and Penny says Minling and that is where we end the episode so this episode is weird you can tell by the numerous amount of times I freaked out over what this episode was doing if you can get past it it's a pretty good episode but it's still weird 
like I can't really get past the weirdness at times especially when I'm explaining it because like there are so many weird things and like even like Min Ling maybe being real like what like spoilers okay spoilers they do not have a baby triceratops walking around for the rest of the series. However, however, that might not seem too far-fetched after this episode where reality just almost doesn't exist for a lot of the characters for most of the episode. And, like, like I don't... I don't get it. I know I said that a lot in this episode, but I don't... I do not get it. It's super weird. Like, really weird. I don't... But like I said, it's fine otherwise. Uh, but... Still, I don't... Like, what, what happened is, like... Are they still somewhat in fiction in their imagination at the end? Are have they always been in the imagination? Is that stupid TV tropes thing right and Blythe is in a coma? I hate that. I hate that idea so much because it completely discredits the idea of the work because if someone's just in a coma the entire time and it's all a dream or whatever then what's the point of this there are a few exceptions to this rule but i don't think this show is one of them if that's the case but it's not the case except maybe it's the case for minling I don't know. Okay. I'm going to stop myself right here before this turns into a two-hour podcast on its own. Just me repeating myself for like an hour saying, I don't get it. Why are they doing this? I don't know. So that will be this episode of the Littlest Petcast. Be sure to leave your comments and reviews on Shout Engine, on Apple Podcast, on the Google Play Store, and wherever else RSS feeds go when they just don't know. They really don't. And be sure to tune in next time for the episode Alligators and Handbags. I will see you then.